While engineering is an incredibly rewarding career or hobby, it has the ability to result in utter failure. While sometimes that failure means lost money or just a warranty claim, sometimes it can be catastrophic. Stories of engineering failures allow us to learn from mistakes and ultimately design better. But many failures have grave consequences. On the fateful day of January 28th, 1986, the skies over the coast of Florida lit ablaze. The Challenger shuttle had just exploded, 73 seconds after takeoff, instantly killing all seven crew members. Seven, six, we have main engine start, four, three, two, one, and liftoff, liftoff of the 25th Space Shuttle mission, and it has cleared the tower. Roger, roll, Challenger. Good roll program confirmed. Challenger now heading down range. Engines beginning throttling down now at 94%, normal throttles uh, for most of the flight, 104%. We'll throttle down to 65% uh, shortly. Engines at 65%, three engines uh, running normally, three good fuel cells, three good APUs. Velocity 2,257 feet per second, altitude 4.3 nautical miles, downrange distance three nautical miles. Throttling up, three engines now at 104%. Challenger, go at throttle up. Challenger, go at throttle up. One minute, 15 seconds. Velocity, 2,900 feet per second. Altitude, nine nautical miles. Downrange distance, seven nautical miles. The day is remembered by many around the world. As for what caused the explosion, an investigation into the launch and subsequent explosion noted a number of factors. The launch was initially planned for January 22, 1986, but after bad weather, it had been rescheduled a number of times before the January 28th launch date. Even on the day of launch, its time had been pushed back two hours due to exceptionally cold weather. The ultimate cause of failure was an O-ring failure in the right solid rocket booster, but the investigation determined that cold weather had played a factor in this internal failure. The Challenger explosion itself in total created 14 tons of debris scattered across the Florida coast and floating in the Atlantic Ocean. While many objects survived the blast, perhaps most notable is that of a tattered soccer ball covered in messages from schoolchildren in Texas. Ellison Onizuka was one of the astronauts on the Challenger flight, and his daughter Janelle had given him that soccer ball ahead of the launch for good luck. The ball itself was no more than a practice ball used by Janelle's team, but it was signed by her teammates and herself and said good luck shuttle crew on the side in big blue letters. It's that same soccer ball that was found just hours after Janelle had handed it off, floating in the Atlantic, recovered by the US Coast Guard. While this story of heartbreaking engineering failure may seem to end there, it starts us off on an inspiring journey. Janelle Onizuka says that the moment she hugged her dad and handed him that fateful soccer ball was the last fond memory she had of him face to face. Following the investigation into the explosion by NASA, all of the personal effects found from the crash were returned to the families of the crew member that they belonged to. Janelle's mom, Lorna, received the call from NASA about the ball and decided to donate it to Clear Lake High School, Janelle's high school, where it sat in a display cabinet for nearly 30 years in remembrance of the Challenger crew. The ball itself never made it into space on the Challenger but its days on Earth, sitting idly in a display cabinet, were numbered. In 2016, Shane Kimbrough, an astronaut slated for another stint in the International Space Station, was preparing for his second trip away from Earth. He asked the Clear Lake High School principal if there was anything that the school wanted to put into space, and her mind immediately turned to the ball on display. 
On October 19, 2016, the ball boarded Expedition 49 with Kimbrough and spent 173 days in space. The astronaut took pictures with the ball aboard the International Space Station, cementing its redemption arc in space history. After returning from the International Space Station, the ball now sits in its own glass case that reads, Space Shuttle Challenger, January 28, 1986. International Space Station, October 19, 2016. Clear Lake High School, November 3, 2017. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd planned to speak to you tonight to report on the State of the Union. But the events of earlier today have led me to change those plans. Today is a day for mourning and remembering. Nancy and I are pained to the core by the tragedy of the Shuttle Challenger. We know we share this pain with all of the people of our country. This is truly a national loss. Nineteen years ago, almost to the day, we lost three astronauts in a terrible accident on the ground. But we've never lost an astronaut in flight. We've never had a tragedy like this. And perhaps we've forgotten the courage it took for the crew of the shuttle. But they, the Challenger 7, were aware of the dangers but overcame them and did their jobs brilliantly. We mourn seven heroes, Michael Smith, Dick Scobie, Judith Resnick, Ronald McNair, Ellison Onizuka, Gregory Jarvis, and Krista McAuliffe. We mourn their loss as a nation together. The families of the seven, we cannot bear as you do the full impact of this tragedy. But we feel the loss and we're thinking about you so very much. Your loved ones were daring and brave, and they had that special grace, that special spirit that says, give me a challenge, and I'll meet it with joy. They had a hunger to explore the universe and discover its truths. They wished to serve, and they did. They served all of us. We've grown used to wonders in this century. It's hard to dazzle us. But for 25 years, the United States space program has been doing just that. We've grown used to the idea of space, and perhaps we forget that we've only just begun. We're still pioneers. They, the members of the Challenger crew, were pioneers. And I want to say something to the school children of America who were watching the live coverage of the shuttle's takeoff. I know it's hard to understand, but sometimes painful things like this happen. It's all part of the process of exploration and discovery. It's all part of taking a chance and expanding man's horizons. The future doesn't belong to the faint-hearted. It belongs to the brave. The Challenger crew was pulling us into the future, and we'll continue to follow them. I've always had great faith in and respect for our space program, and what happened today does nothing to diminish it. We don't hide our space program. We don't keep secrets and cover things up. We do it all up front and in public. That's the way freedom is, and we wouldn't change it for a minute. We'll continue our quest in space. There will be more shuttle flights and more shuttle crews, and yes, more volunteers, more civilians, more teachers in space. Nothing ends here. Our hopes and our journeys continue. I want to add that I wish I could talk to every man and woman who works for NASA or who worked on this mission and tell them your dedication and professionalism have moved and impressed us for decades. And we know of your anguish. We share it. There's a coincidence today. On this day, 390 years ago, the great explorer Sir Francis Drake died aboard ship off the coast of Panama. In his lifetime, the great frontiers were the oceans. And a historian later said he lived by the sea, died on it, and was buried in it. Well, today, we can say of the Challenger crew, their dedication was, like Drake's, complete. The crew of the Space Shuttle Challenger honored us for the manner in which they lived their lives. We will never forget them, nor the last time we saw them, this morning, as they prepared for their journey and waved goodbye, and slipped the surly bonds of Earth to touch the face of God. Thank you.